Hello and welcome back to another video guys. Today we're jumping back into DaVinci Resolve with a video I've been kind of working on for a little bit now and by working on just sort of like building the idea of it's 10 things you need to know, 10 tips that you should know if you're an editor in DaVinci Resolve. Now the reason I'm kind of doing this video is just because I come across a lot of tips as I'm editing and it's kind of hard to put them into single videos because what the hell do you name it? Like it's a tip. Like it's a, it's a thing I think you should know and I can't create a video. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump right into DaVinci Resolve and get going. So these tips are gonna range from super simple stuff to that you probably might know maybe to things that I'm sure some of you don't. So, so if I do mention things you weren't aware of, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. So starting off with tip number one, and that is this little guy right up here in the corner here, the bypass color grades and fusion effects. It's a magical button. Imagine you are editing and everything is starting to slow down and you can't make your cuts anymore because your computer's just bogged down. That's what this button does. You click it and it will disable all color grades and fusion effects that you have installed. Now, I did say fusion effects as well. So if you have a fusion title like we do here, it will no longer be visible on the timeline. So this is a good way if you maybe do your color grading first to be able to access it and just be able to edit your video a lot faster. Now, if you for some reason only want to turn off say fusion titles you can actually right click on this little symbol and you can actually just have it you can just disable fusion and so basically what this button will do now is it will turn off and on color grades but it will leave fusion effects alone likewise you can right click and disable just the color and have it as fusion so that when you click it it just disables fusion effects so i like to have it on both i find it nice and easy but keep that in mind when you're you know editing that that is on or off because it can throw you sometimes. All right, tip number two, guys, we're jumping into the color grading panel. And this is a cool one called Shot Match. And right here, I have two clips. I have this nice ocean clip and I have this nice autumn clip. And so basically, shot matching is essentially it takes the color information of one shot and applies it to the other. So scenario, you are filming for a client and you accidentally mess up the white balance for one of the shots. This is where you'd kind of come in. So let's say that this particular shot of the ocean was meant to be filmed in a more warmer tone. It's really, really simple. Select the clip you want to adjust. So make sure that's the one you have selected. Right click on the uh, clip that you want it to match to and just go shot match to this clip. Boom, and there you have it. You have a very warm, it does a pretty good job. Like they're pretty similar. Keep in mind, if it's really low quality footage, it could ruin the footage. And you can see here, like if I play through, there's like some crazy noise going on. But if we were to undo that, we could literally go back and we could do the same and we could go shot match to this clip and you get a similar kind of vibe. It actually does a really good job. Keeping it in the color panel, tip number three is append grade. So let's say you go through and you have a long video clip, talking headshot, maybe like this one, and you cut the clip before you color grade and you realize, holy shit, I now have to color grade every single clip. Well, it's actually really, really simple. We have the same sort of thing here. We have two clips, all right, at a certain point in time, same, same as before, select the clip that you want to adjust, right click on the uh, one that has the color grade already and just go apply grade and there you go. Nice and simple. And what this one is doing, is it is actually just copying the nodes applied to the first clip and then just pasting them onto the second clip. So it is a simple copy and paste. So tip 3.5 is kind of like an auto color correct. So you select the clip you want and down here in the left near the color wheels, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, no matter what tab you're on, it'll be there, but the color wheels, you have this button here, auto balance, and it's gonna click on it and you can see it does a job, it kind of tries to balance the footage as best it can. Again, if you have like 8-bit footage or whatever, just really low quality footage, this is probably not gonna work too well. But I find if you're using raw footage or like really high quality 10-bit footage, this does a really good job. Tip number four is power bins. And this is really good if you are someone who edits a lot of videos and you need to use the same assets all the time. Maybe you're a YouTuber and you have an intro like myself that you have to bring in every single time to every single video. This is where power bins come into it. So you can see here, as I click in, we've got preset power bin and I have my like YouTube introduction that I can just drag and drop. 
So how do you do it? So what we want to do is we're gonna go back to our project and you're just gonna create a new project. All right, we're gonna call it preset. So here I'm just gonna open my one and then bring all the assets into this project that you want. So here you see I have some video clips and then I have some audio as well. By default, power bins, they're not there. So what you actually wanna go is you wanna to go to view and turn on show power bins down the bottom here. Once it is, it's a simple matter of dragging and dropping the footage into the master bin. And you can see we have it here. And then what I like to do is create a couple of folders inside. So we've got presets, that's for the video footage. So this one here, we're going to rename and call it music. And we're gonna just drag all the music into the folder. These two files are going to be viewable across all your projects. So I can go back out of this one, back into what we're working on. And you can see here that the music is still here and I can bring it in and drop it in like so. Really great if you have just a collection of assets that you use a lot of the time, power bins. It's gonna save you a lot of time. Tip number five is removing views that you don't need. So DaVinci Resolve is an awesome piece of video editing software, but it has a lot of bloatware on it. It has the cut page, it has the media page, the fusion page, the color page, all these different pages that maybe you just don't use. Like I myself don't use the media page anymore. Like I just find it's easy enough to use the, just the browser here in the edit page. So how do you disable those panels that you don't need to get rid of some bloatware? It's really, really simple. So what you wanna do is up here, you wanna go to workspace and then you got show page. And here you can just turn on and off what pages you want. So right now I have the Fairlight page shown. I don't really use the Fairlight page at all, so I'm gonna disable it. And now you can see down here that we just have edit, fusion, color, and deliver. And that's all I really need. And honestly, it's not a big deal, but I find by removing those extra pages, which you can still get to, you can see you can switch to the pages here. But I find by removing them there, it just makes it a little bit easier and less bloat when looking at the page. Tips number six and seven, tips number six and seven, uh, very, very similar, and that is the use of the Option key on a Mac, and I think the Alt key on a PC. So, let's say you're editing and you just want to duplicate a clip. So you can select the clip that you want, hold Option, and then click and drag, and you duplicate that clip. Super cool, same with this one, you can just drag it and drop. Super cool, split it over, bring it over. Really easy way if you uh, just need to bring a lot of B-roll in and add it one after the other. Now, like I said, these two tips are very similar. Using the option key, especially with footage like this, where it has an audio track selected to it, option clicking allows you to separate that track. And you can see as you move it, it actually tells you how many seconds the clip has been adjusted by. So you can see here that this audio clip is now 23 seconds ahead of the video clip. And you can just bring it back. A really good way for like clips like this where you know there is no audio i can option click and delete the audio because i don't need it tip number eight is for all my final cut pro users out there that maybe have switched to davinci resolve and that is the trim edit tool so one of the most controversial features of final cut pro is the magnetic timeline and where everything sort of snaps together but the benefit of the magnetic timeline is actually really quick to make edits. Well, we have a similar thing in DaVinci Resolve called the Trim Edit Tool. So when you're in your editing here, you wanna hit T, and it is this little tool here, and it will be recognized by this little guy, this little icon right here. So not this one, this one. And when you click, you can now extend the clip, and these white boxes here, that you can kind of see on the screen. They are the length of the clip, so I can go all the way out to here to finish the clip. And you can bring it in, bring it out. Go to the next one, bring it in, bring it out. Same thing, bring it in, bring it out. And you can do that with every single clip. And it's kind of cool, because it will move everything along with it, so it allows you to leave the clip in place, and it's similar to the magnetic timeline. The next tip, tip number nine, almost at the end there guys, is grabbing still images. Now this is beneficial not just for YouTubers who maybe wanna grab a still from their video for a thumbnail, but also really good when you're working with clients. So when you're working with clients, quite often they don't know what they want. So you color grade their clips and then you render it out, send it to them and like, it looks weird, it's too orange. So this is a good one to color grade a clip, 
grab a still, send it to the client, get their feedback on how it looks. So what we're gonna do is go over to the color tab. Here we have our footage. We've just color graded it. Let's go to this one. Nice color graded clip. We wanna send it to our client. We want to know if they like it. Super simple. We're gonna to go to the view menu up here. We're gonna to go to stills and we're gonna hit grab still. Now it is quite a um, complicated shortcut. This is why I always just go view grab still. And it's grab the still. Where does it live? It lives in the gallery up here in the top left. For those of you wondering what that actually did. Go to the gallery and here we have it. And yes, when you scrub through, it does look like a video, but keep it relaxed. It is a still image of the frame that we selected. You're gonna right click on it and then you can export. So you can export it out. And by default, it exports it as a DPX, whatever the hell that is. So you can just drop down, go JPEG, and then you can rename it and do whatever you want. And then you have your still image, send it off to the client, get the feedback, come back in, tweak it, do it again. Super awesome tip. And on to the 10th tip for you guys, must know tips when editing in DaVinci Resolve. That is Command D on a Mac or Control D if you're on PC weirdos. So I find this really helpful when creating fusion compositions because by default you drag in, let's just go uh, effects here, we drag in an adjustment clip or a fusion composition. By default they go for five seconds. Maybe you're creating it for a very specific length, very specific. Well you don't want to have to click this and drag and kind of like look at those numbers there and kind of go yep that's what I want. So by selecting the clip and then hitting command or control D brings up for this change clip duration. And it's really great, especially if you do visual effects, to go via the frames. So you might get a director says, hey, we have a shot, it needs to be 164 frames long. So you just go here, 164, boom. Extends it exactly to what we need and we can go in and edit it. This has been clutch for those fusion compositions. Maybe you need it for editing video footage. Again, you would know but I find that it is just super helpful with fusion compositions, especially like when I work with people and maybe you don't have the footage straight up, but you can ask like, how long was the shot? And they will tell you and say, hey, the shot was 250 frames long. That's what we need. So I can just work within those confines and go from there. That's it guys. 10 tips, tricks, whatever you want to call them, things that you should know in DaVinci Resolve. They're going to make your life so much easier. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I got some more in the pipeline as well, so stay tuned. And yeah, until the next video, guys. Actually, wait, if you got this far in the video, write down in the comments, pineapple. That is like my safe word for the, those of you that stay around to the end of my videos. I love you guys. Uh, yeah, anyway, guys, see ya.